In this chapter, we're going to be looking at financial services. In this lesson, we're going to look at choosing an account. All right. Hi, everyone. So in this chapter, we're looking at financial services. In this particular lesson, we're looking at choosing an account. Okay. So to start off with, the, the assumption we're making here is that we're, you know, we're, we're someone who's looking for a place to, to do our banking. And so there's some options here that we want to look at. We just want to kind of carefully go through the sorts of things that you might look at, sorts of things that you might consider as you're making decisions like that. So for example, here we go. Banks have different account options depending on your profile and needs. Different accounts will have different perks and fees. So here's some examples of some student accounts. Okay. And so here we go. So let's take a look here. We've got the TD, Royal Bank, CIBC, and BMO. So monthly fees. Okay. For students, there's no monthly fees. There's no minimum balance. And then for the number of, of free transactions, okay, for TD, Royal Bank, BMO, it's t it's 25, but CIBC has a lim an, an unlimited number, okay? Then we've got a uh, charge for each additional transaction, okay? So if you go beyond 25, it's going to cost you $1.25, $1.25, okay? It's not applicable here because it's it's unlimited, but again, $1.25. So we're seeing right now, and it, sorry, I should keep going here. And then for e-transfers, you've got an unlimited number, and then here... Uh, we got the word transaction here, so as long as we're just doing transactions with that, but you know, that might be a misprint. Um, so anyway, with this right here, you're seeing that actually they're they're almost all the same. CIBC here is a little bit different. Now for these accounts here, when we talk about transaction, we're talking about debit purchase, okay, uh, going to an ATM, writing a check, uh, bill payment, or or pre-authorized payments, okay. So to start off with, let's take a quick look here at uh, this one student says here, Kamal is looking uh, at choosing a student bank account. So in one month, Kamal receives two deposits from his paycheck and makes four cash withdrawals. Okay. Uh, Kamal pays five bills online and makes nine e-transfers. So which bank should he choose? Let's just take, let's just think here. Okay. So it looks like we're making, uh, when we, we're talking about pulling money out here, uh, he's got four Five, so it's nine, and then nine e-transfer. He's making like 18 of uh, these transactions here. Okay? So which bank account should he choose? Well, the, really, the comparison here is really between these three and CIBC. Now, because he's looking at um, basically 18 transfers, okay, sorry, 18 uh, uh, transactions there, um, really... Really, uh, they're all basically the same. So it really wouldn't matter in this particular case which one of these uh, he chooses. Okay, let's move on to the next phase here. So let's just suppose uh, Kamal chooses TD as his bank. Then, four years later, he's, he's no longer a student. So now he's working here. Now things have changed and his needs are going to change a little bit. And so what the bank offers is also going to change. So he's got three different options here. You can go with the minimum checking account. Okay, there's a monthly fee of three ninety five, but there's no minimum balance. He's allowed twelve free transactions, and then beyond that, a uh, dollar twenty five, and then unlimited e transfers. However, the everyday checking account has got a ten dollar ninety five uh, cent monthly fee. As but as long as he has a minimum of three thousand in there, he's fine. Okay. He's fine. That's that's okay. He won't have to pay that. Still got, uh, in this case, 25 transactions, free transactions. That was like the, the previous student account. $1.25 for each one that goes beyond that, and he's allowed 12 e-transfers. Then he's got the all-inclusive banking plan, which is a $30 per month monthly fee. But if he keeps it at 5000 or more, then he doesn't have to pay that. And he's got unlimited transactions, unlimited e-transfers. So let's take a look at his situation here. So out of post-secondary, Kamal has 4000 in his bank account, and he got a job as a rotary drill operator. His uh, new job requires him to travel to a work site for seven days, and when he comes home, uh, for, for five days. So in one month, he's on the work site for somewhere between 18 and 21 days. Now, we're going to assume uh, kind of the worst there, 21, because while he is at the work site, work will pay for lunch, but he has to pay for dinner. Then when he's home... Okay, so for that five-day period, for and in a month here, there's going to be those two five-day periods that he's home here. Uh, he e-transfers his roommate once uh, for groceries and utilities. So which account is best for Kamal here? Well, let's take a look at what he would pay here. So let's take a look at the minimum. 
Okay. Now, it's a three dollar ninety five monthly fee, and that's just going to happen here because there's no there's no minimum uh, balance there. Twelve transactions. Okay. Now he's going to get twelve transact. Uh, 12 free transactions here, except how many does he make in a month? Let's just take a look. Let's maximize this because we know that he's buying dinner every day that he's out at work. So that's 21, 21 times that he's going to buy dinner. And then two, two times that he's going to make an e-transfer, except that doesn't really matter in this case because he's got unlimited e-transfers. So let's just talk about this. He's got 21, uh, 21, um, transactions that he's going to make because of those meals. But he's allowed 12 free, which means he's making nine transfers or nine transactions. And each one of those is going to cost him $1.25 because he's got to pay for every one over the 12 here. So that is simply going to be, we'll just pull out the calculator. And we'll just do this. Okay. So 3.95 is his fee plus nine times 1.25. Okay. He's going to pay $15.20 for that one. Now let's take a look at the everyday. There's a monthly fee of ten dollars and ninety-five cents, okay. But if he maintains a balance of of three thousand, then he waives the monthly fee. Now in this particular scenario here, we learn that that he actually does. He keeps four thousand dollars in his bank account. So okay, so that monthly fee is is gone. Now he is allowed twenty-five. Uh, free transactions, and then a dollar tw uh, twenty-five for each one beyond that. Well, we've already done the calculation here. Okay, we know that he's going to um, have nine transactions. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. In this case, sorry, it was nine transactions beyond this one. He's he's allowed twenty-five uh, free transactions. Well, in this case, he doesn't actually even make twenty-five transactions, and he's allowed twelve e-transfers. Well, he's only got making two here, so. What happens here is per month, he's actually going to pay nothing. No no fees for that. Now, if it's the all-inclusive, okay, the all-inclusive is $30 a, a month, or sorry, $29.95, but if he keeps a balance of more than $5,000, he skips that. Well, he doesn't skip that, okay? He's only got $4,000 in there. So in this particular case here, which would be the best one for him to use? Well, it would be the everyday. Okay, the everyday checking account. Okay, because if he keeps going the kind of the way he's going, he's going to pay no monthly fees for, for that account. All right, let's look at a slightly different situation. So Kamal's friend, Bonnie, recently graduated as well. Bonnie is working as a freelance column writer and is earning extra income as a waitress at Joey's on the side. Bonnie's been living on her own for the last four years and has gotten into the good habit of buying groceries once a week. Okay, so that's that's important here, once a week. Paying her utility and rent bills on time. Okay, so there's no late fees in, involved in that. And only uses her tips, okay, so cash, for her extra spending and entertainment budget. So which account is best for for Bonnie? Now, we're not given... We're not given a ton of information here. We don't know exactly, you know, how much money she has in her, in her account. We're not a hundred percent sure, kind of where things are at with her. But let's just let's just think about this. If she is using her tips, okay, so that the cash that comes in for all her extra spending, then really she's only making uh, four transactions uh, a week. Sorry, four transactions because she's going to buy buy groceries once a week every month, and then she pays her rent and utility uh, bills on time. Well, there's there's not a lot of those transactions here, so we don't know how much money she's she's got in that account. We don't know if she's maintaining uh, a balance of over three thousand, so it's not quite clear here. <clears throat> but she's not ha she doesn't have that many transactions, so. Let's just assume, kind of worst case scenario for her, that she can't maintain that three thousand. Then this is actually the best one for her, okay, because although she's only allowed uh, twelve free transactions, she's in the habit of using her cash to pay for that. So she she's not even kind of uh, approaching that. So in this particular case here, it probably makes the most sense for her to use the minimum checking. Now again. 
this is this is because we make this this judgment here because we don't have a whole lot of information. We're just kind of looking at what's what's given here, uh, given here, and just making some some guesses. All right, let's have a look at a, a different situation. And again, we're we're still looking at account fees here, and this is this should be uh, recognizable from the previous page here. Now let's take a look at this scenario here. So Nelson also banks with TD. In one one month, Nelson makes six deposits four cash withdrawals and uses his debit card 22 times. Okay. And he makes 10 E transfers. Nelson pays four bills online and has two pre-authorized payments. Now he maintains a monthly balance of $3,500. So let's take a look at, look at what his, his fees would be here. Now, just to be consistent with what we said before, um, the, we did not identify uh, deposits as trans as transactions here. So we're going to kind of stick with that for right now. So when we talk about those six deposits there, okay, we're not going to uh, add those in those transactions, okay, just to be consistent with the definition here. But we've got four cash withdrawals, okay, and uses uh, the credit, the, sorry, the debit card 22 times. So we're looking at 26 transactions there, and then 10 e-transfers. Now, in addition to that, we've got uh, four bills and two pre-authorized payments. So there's 26, sorry, there's there's six more here. So what do we have here? With 22, four, there's 26 plus six, there's 32 transactions, and then 10 e-transfers. Okay, so here, if we're gonna use the minimum account here, that's going to be 395, and I'm just gonna write this down below, okay? 395, and then we're going to add to it, well, he's got 32 transactions here, but we're going to subtract 12 because he gets 12 free. Multiply what's over by 125. And then it doesn't matter about those e-transfers. They're just not going to count. So here's what we've got. Okay, so 3.95, so $3.95 plus 32 minus 12, okay, 20, times 1.25. And this is going to cost... $28.95 in fees. Okay. Same scenario. What happens with the everyday checking account? Well, for the everyday checking account, there's a $10.95 uh, fee if, okay, if he keeps his balance above 3000 Now, the, qu the question, the scenario actually suggests he does. He maintains at least 3500 so it never dips below that. So it turns out our fee does not include that $10.95. So that's, that's awesome. This time we only have, uh, sorry, the number of uh, free transactions we get is 25. We know that we made 32, so it's going to be 32 minus 25. It's still a dollar twenty-five. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing here. It's still a dollar twenty-five beyond that, and this time he gets twelve uh, free e-transfers, but he's using ten. So th that doesn't even come into play here. So really, this is all we're we're needing to do, and so it's going to be thirty-two in this case minus twenty-five uh, times one dollar twenty-five cents, and so our monthly fee here would be eight dollars. 75 cents. Now let's take a look at the all inclusive. It's going to cost $29.95, but if he's able to maintain a fee, uh, sorry, a balance of more than 5,000, they waive that. Uh, well, this question tells us he doesn't. But everything else here is unlimited. So this is essentially just going to be $29.95. So in this case right here, clearly, uh, like we saw with an earlier one, Clearly, it's this everyday checking account that makes the most sense for, for Nelson here. Now, before we leave this question, we might ask one other little question here. What could he do to reduce this charge even further? Well, let's take a look at what he's doing here. Uh, one of the things he could do here is he could he could try to make less cash withdrawals. Instead of making four cash withdrawals in a month, maybe, maybe take out larger amounts uh, than he's doing right now to just limit the number of times he does that, okay? Uh, are there ways that he can reduce the number of times he uses his debit card, okay? Maybe maybe it would be smarter, again, to, to take out more money, okay? At, at the, maybe even if he does stick with his four cash withdrawals, maybe he takes out enough money that he doesn't need to use his debit card uh, 22 times. So 
it looks like having cash on hand would actually make these these fees a little bit lower. All right. Now in this question here, it says the following table shows William's transactions for the past month. And he has the everyday checking account with TD. So that's the one we've kind of been, in a sense, suggesting for the people we've been looking at here. Now here are his transactions. Okay, and you can see everything that he's that he's doing here. Now, let's take a look at the questions that are going, coming along with this. So, how many transactions did William go through in a month? Did William maintain his $3,000 account balance? And what will William's account charge be for this month? Okay, so he's got the everyday one. Now, let's take a quick look here. How many transactions is he is he going through? Well, it's, that's just a, an easy thing to do here. We're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... Now remember, based on the information given at the beginning, we're just for the time being, we're not going to count the deposits there. Uh, <laughs> I lost track. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, 18. And let's take a quick look here. So we know that he's got 18 transactions. Now, and we should, I'm going to back up a little bit here. 18. However, when I glance through those, okay, and look at these, when I glance glance through these things, I've got an e-transfer here, so one e-transfer. And it seemed to me, I thought I saw another one at one point. One e-transfer. No, that's it. So really, because uh, their e-transfers are dealt with just a little bit differently, there's 17 transactions. Okay, and one e-transfer. Now, is he able to maintain a a balance? Because if we go back, we go back to that everyday banking account here. Is he able to keep a, a balance of more than three thousand? And we take a quick look through there. Looks good. Looks good. Uh oh. Okay, no, no, he can't. So that monthly fee is going to be tacked onto that. So let's take a quick look at the everyday again. And let's see where he's at here. So he is not going to be able to, to drop the monthly the monthly fee here. So let's let's pull this over here a little bit and let's add that on here. So he's got ten dollars ninety five cents plus. Now he's allowed twenty five free transactions and he doesn't go beyond that. He's also allowed uh, 12 uh, free e-transfers and he doesn't get anywhere near that. So really, that's all he's going to spend is $10.95, just that monthly fee because he's not able to keep that below uh, the, the 3000 minimum mark that they want here. No, but that's okay. So there you go. So let's go back to how many transactions. Well, he had 17 transactions, one e-transfer, Okay. Was he able to maintain it? No. But because these are low enough, all he's going to have to pay for is that monthly fee.